In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by DinoTech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Team BRM driver John Magro kept his slim championship chances alive with a win in the penultimate round of the Australian Formula 3 Championship at Phillip Island last weekend. Magro won two of the weekend's three races to lead home pre-race favourite and series leader Tim Macro. Macro will take a comfortable 34-point lead into the series finale at Sandown in November, but mathematically he can still be beaten by his teammate. Nick Foster was third in the Miguel after coming back through the field in race two after he failed to finish Saturday's opening sprint race. An upset win in the National Sports Day Series with Tasmanian Bruce Banks taking the outright win. Driving one of only two non-V8 powered cars in the race, the consistent Banks took his unique fire-breathing turbocharged rotary RX-7 to the biggest win of his career. Oh yeah, it is a little bit unique. It's first built it. Oh, several years ago and initially we weren't allowed to run it because it wasn't homologated we had to wait for a couple of years so it's, it's a fairly old car but um, yeah, it's still the still chassis like it's not the chassis sorry it's still body with a uh, space frame chassis and yeah, yeah we've put a fair bit of work in we've changed it about I don't know how many times and tried to make it better but you know you go forward and then go back so yeah we've, we've just lately moved the engine across 150 mil because we changed the diff and yeah so we've been chasing vibrations and stuff and I think luckily we got rid of them this weekend with a bit of luck. So tell us about the motor. Uh, the motor started out as a uh, normally aspirated 20B which is a triple rotor and we had I don't know about 265 kilowatts of rear wheels ended up um, putting a turbo on it because the V8 just left me for dead in the end so and a little bit too heavy being a full steel body. Well, not full, but yeah, mostly steel body. And then, um, yeah, we ended up, I don't know, 460 kilowatts, so we got virtually 200 kilowatts extra to back wheels. So yeah, it's a lot of difference and harder to drive. <laughs> what about the reliability of the car? Uh, yeah, look, the car's been uh, a bit unreliable because we changed diffs, moved things around, and then we had a lot of trouble to tail up, and we've pretty well sorted that out now. It's, it's, been pretty good just of late there. Well, it's good to see the car around because there's a bit of variety in the in the category. I mean, pretty much everything is powered by a six-litre Chev. Is that uh, a reason, is that a sort of a change in the rules or something that has made the, the six-litre Chev so ubiquitous? Do you think you guys could, could get a bit more of a break in terms of uh, in things like weight and all the rest of it to so make these cars more competitive? Yeah, well, it, look, the six-litre Chev, because they come out of America now using NASCAR engines, are so much cheaper. It's just uh, you can buy them easy now, 15, 20,000 or thereabouts, easy. So virtually bolt into the car where you go. And I've been driving one of those for the last three meetings actually because this wasn't ready to run. And to be honest with you, I think that was a lot easier to drive than this thing, being a turbo. So yeah, a lot of you know power on and then all of a sudden you get full power. Like a Chev, you've got the um, torque from one end to the other. Just there, yeah, a lot easier to drive. I'd rather have something different, like you said, yeah. Different car to just a normal Chev. So what about the state of sports sedan racing at the moment? I mean, we seem to see the same cars turning up, but we don't see particularly huge fields. Certainly numbers at the state level have dropped considerably. What's the situation with the category? Where's it going? Uh, look, yeah, the Nationals have been like a little bit low the last couple of years. This year it's actually picked up a little bit, which is a good thing. Uh, we had um, Queensland Raceway, there was 25 entries, I think, so that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah not too bad. And, but yeah, they aren't, obviously with our economy not being all that flash, yeah, anything you know, is, that costs a lot of money like these things do, yeah. yeah something's got to go, really, at the end of the day. So, But there is a lot of cars being built, and yeah, it's, it does look good still for the future, so hopefully next year we'll get a couple more in, for sure. Do you
you think it'd be better off for the category to uh, perhaps move back to more state-based racing where the cost isn't as high and you're going to get with those individual state guys? Or how important is it to pay the money to get onto television? Uh, look, realistically, if you've got one of these things, you have to get it going no matter which way you go. The only extra cost is obviously your, your travelling and things like that. Uh, yeah, we, we come from Tassie, obviously it's a lot more expensive to get across that little bit of water, but yeah, it's, um, it's yeah, look, honestly, it, it costs a lot of money anyway, no matter which way you go, the only difference is it costs a little bit more to, to travel over here for us or, you know, accommodation, whatever, that's about all, so, but we, you know, it, it's, everybody in the class is really good, we have fun, we uh, they help each other out, it's all, it's really good, it's, it's a good open class, we're virtually within reason anything goes sort of scenario so you build your own thing uh, like this has changed that much since we started it's just uh, it's unreal like you know initially I would I built it with a four cylinder turbo motor and then thought nah it's a it's a match we've got to stay mad so you know so yeah it changes a lot on it but it's good fun yeah so what are the plans for the future you going to have you got any major plans for next year with the car uh, look it, it's we just, as I said, we just did a fair bit of work on it. At the end of the day, we got here just pretty well. Uh, I left home at, I don't know, quarter past half past two. Had to make the boat by six o'clock, and that's like 400 k's in the old bus. So, yeah, it was pretty well, virtually, yeah. Right on the, right on the, you know, hair's breast sort of thing. Yeah, very close to not getting on the boat. So, and we're still now, we didn't get a chance to corner weight it. So we're just about to do that now. So yeah, it just feels a little bit slippery out there. So we've caught away it now. We've moved everything across. All the weights are all different on the wheels. So hopefully it might go a little bit better tomorrow. Well, it's nice, as said, it's nice to see something a bit different out there and to hear something a bit different. It's a beautifully turned out car. Congratulations on it. And for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you very much. It was a tough weekend for the leading teams. Darren Hossack and Kerry Bailey both fell foul of the island's strict noise limits and were effectively black flagged out of the event. Tony Ricciardello looked set to dominate, winning the first two races. But car problems in race three saw the feature race win go to local favourite Daniel Tomasi in the Chev Power and Calibro. Ryan Simpson's remarkable winning streak in the V8 Touring Car Series continued after a clean sweep at Phillip Island. Simpson won race one on Saturday and was then elevated to the win in race two after five second post-race penalties to Matthew White and Shay Davies. Simpson then went on to win the feature race, making it the perfect weekend. Richard Musket wrapped up the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge with a dominant performance in the season finale. The Victorian took out all three races to be crowned the 2013 champion after winning 13 out of the season's 18 races. Simon Tavernor secured his second straight National Series title in the saloon cars after splitting the weekend's race wins with Wayne King. The final race of the weekend was red flagged early after a multiple car pile-up on the exit of Turn 4. Neil Muston in his 2.7 litre V8 powered SR8 won both 50 minute Radical Cup races. Simon Haggerty was the victor in the smaller four cylinder class. And Russell Jamison was the man to beat in Supercuts winning the 250cc international class. Victorian Dale Williams won the single cylinder national category while the 125 gearbox class was won by Tony Lapis. More power, better fuel economy, a cleaner, more efficient engine. They're just a few of the advantages of having your car tuned on a Dynotech Dyno. To find your nearest Dynotech workshop, go to dyno.com.au. Dynotech by Dyno Dynamics.